one. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here. Welcome to the Kingdom Crossroads podcast today. We're so blessed that you're joining us. There are so many people in the world today that are hurting, hurting in different ways, but hurting in their hearts that affects basically everything else. Not heartaches, but actual hurting hearts, pain that's deep rooted and affects them each and every day of their life. What can be done for folks that are hurting like this? Well, that's where our guest today comes in. Cindy Bartelli is back again today as our guest. She's been on before. You can listen to all our previous interviews in our archives. She's also the author of a great book, The Heart Healer, God's Response to Personal Prayer in a Hurting World, and her study guide, The Heart Healer Study Guide. Amen. But today she's back for part nine and the final episode of our Heart Healer series, at least for right now. Amen. And there are so many hurting people, many listening to us right now, that will benefit from hearing real life examples of, of what Cindy is doing to bring healing, heart healing to people in their daily walk. Amen. Cindy's here to minister to you with some examples of people that were in many situations that may be very similar to yours. Maybe not exactly the same, but all the examples are of real people who are hurting. Amen. So be sure to stay to listen to the end. She has a free gift for you today as well. Help me welcome back to the program, Cindy Bartelli. Cindy, thank you for agreeing to come back on and minister to those again who are hurting. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for welcoming me back. I really appreciate this. Amen. For those who may not have listened to our prior interviews, I don't know why, <laughs> but we forgive them. Just go listen now. Uh, can you briefly share with us who is Cindy Bartelli? Well, first, I'm a grateful podcast guest because I appreciate what you do for us in ministry. But uh, most importantly, as author of The Heart Healer and conveyor of this message, I just want to connect the hearts of people to the heart of God. It's a very tender place to be, and he is so ready to show us his love and his healing power. Amen. Amen. And we've been sharing some background and information on several of the people that you've helped along the way that are included yes. in your book. Mm -hmm. Last time we even talked about uh, how to make things right after PTSD. The episode before that was talking about PTSD. Mm -hmm. but last time was how to make things right after receiving heart healing from PTSD. But today I believe we're talking about the pathway to peace and how that relates to heart healing. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, it's actually a chapter, one of the last chapters in The Heart Healer in my book. Okay. And it's it's a surprisingly important chapter. <laughs> well, share about it. Okay. Well, as you mentioned in our previous interviews, we talked a lot about heart healing. and We used true stories of people whose hearts were healed by God. And, and this is something in the miraculous this is something that involves our faith and understanding that God has nothing, he has no barriers, he has no hindrances to operating in the miraculous for us. And when we turn to him with the pain in our hearts from things that have happened to us in the past or currently, you know, he steps in and by his Holy Spirit, he just replaces the pain from those memories with his peace you know that kind of peace pastor is is like hard to understand it's not something that we could sit here and explain to each other about but here's here's what it does it calms our souls so we can have been through a horribly tragic experience and in my case as i've mentioned over the series um, I had many years of heartbreak and loss and despair and depression, and the Lord healed my heart, but he will do that for anyone once they know that he's available and ready. I've often quoted um, the Psalm 3418, where he says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Yeah, amen. Psalms 34 is dear and close to my heart because that's the scripture I got born again with. Oh, really? 34-7. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Amen. Well, yeah, I mean, just so many places in the Bible. In fact, um, in the King James Version, over 800 times the heart is mentioned. 
Amen. That's amazing. Yeah. Amen. And we're not talking about the, the bleeding vessel inside our chest. You're right. Uh, <laughs> it's the, it's, it's not the physical heart. Yeah. It's the, you. the, the you. yes, it's the center of our innermost being. Yeah. And in fact, God says to guard our hearts um, for it determines the course of our lives. Oh yeah. Amen. And that's huge when you really ponder that and think, wow, I've got to guard the center of my innermost being because it determines the course of my life. Mm -hmm. And so after all this healing we've talked about, Pastor, all these weeks and months, um, what we're going to talk about today is how to lock in that peace and Does walk this involve it out. Counseling, prayer, studying the word. What's involved in obtaining this kind of inner peace? Mostly it's recognizing who God is and um, things we can do. There's a key to it, actually. And here's what I want to say. When we ask God to bring peace for our pain, we need to recognize that that peace isn't saying what happened to us is okay. When God gives us peace, it's not because he wants us to say, oh, yeah, it's okay that I was abused, or it's okay that my family member died, or it's okay that I was robbed. But what he is doing is calming us and helping us know that he's there for us and that he loves us and our mind, our will and our emotions, you know, decompress and calm in a way that makes no earthly sense. Yeah. Yeah, amen. <laughs> it's a God thing. <laughs> it's a God thing. I love it. Yeah. Thing. Amen. Yeah. And, and really, I mean, even Jesus said, peace, my peace, I give to you, you know, and, I mean, he's God. You know, you could say he doesn't have a care in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he says it's that kind of peace that that he gives. It says to be shed abroad in our hearts. And, and do you have any stories in your book that gives us an example of what we're talking about today? Well, I do, but you know what? I I gave this some thought, and I think I'm going to tell a true story outside of the book okay. that kind of ties in with where I'm heading. If that's okay with you, sure, yeah. And I think that obtaining this peace is connected to understanding the difference between faith and trust. Mm. So yeah. faith is believing God can do it. Mm. Trust is believing he'll do it for you. Mm. Amen. Amen. So in this, in this true story, and in fact, I had not even known it was true till I researched it. I thought it was just a fable. But in this true story in the 1800s, there was a tightrope walker. And, and I should mention to you that this is based on truth. But when you research it online, there are varying versions of it. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the version I read many, many years ago that really spoke to me. And it, it isn't too far from everything else I read. They're all just with a little twist on the key part. In any case, there was this French tightrope walker who arrived in the U.S. in the 1800s and declared that he wanted to walk a tightrope over Niagara Falls. Mm. So the river is raging, as anyone knows who's ever seen or been at Niagara Falls. And about 1,100 feet up, he uh, strung this tightrope across the river and from the U.S. to Canada. And if anyone wants to read this story for themselves, they just Google um, tightrope walker Niagara Falls and wheelbarrow, and they'll be able to find it because this tightrope walker actually wound up walking back and forth across the tightrope numerous times. One of those times he pushed a wheelbarrow across the tightrope. Yes, the crowd cheers when he gets to the other side. They're so excited and impressed by what he accomplished. And of course, there's that tension of wondering, will he make it? Can he do it? Yeah. So he gets across, the crowd is cheering. He looks at one of the people who cheers the most. It's a young man. And he says to him, uh, son, do you think I can go back across again with this wheelbarrow successfully? And the young man says, yes, sir, I sure do. So the tightrope walker looks at him and says, climb in. Amen. Amen. Prove it. 
Amen. Yes. That's right. And when we think about God, you know, here's this young man. He watches a tightrope walker amazingly, you know, accomplish this great feat. And he believes he can do it. But is he willing to climb in for the ride? Yeah. And that's an example of what it's like to walk with God, because yeah. he we face that whole situation when we're dealing with strife or stress or despair or depression you know, a grief. And we say, Lord, I believe you can give me peace. I believe you can heal my heart. But do you believe enough to trust that he's going to do it for you? Amen. Amen. That is good. That's a good example. That brings in, you know, this new expectation of recognizing that our creator, the the creator of all mankind, is able to do anything nothing is too difficult for him right exactly i mean think about it. he created everything <laughs> everything and if he could do that my goodness then yeah yeah well, our little needs are you know what are big in our eyes is you know i mean yeah you know, i sometimes i i think about like flies and stuff like that i say why why did you create these bugs, God? <laughs> but then you look at the birds eating. What are they eating? The bugs. Ah, uh, you know? yeah. And if we didn't have the bugs, we wouldn't have the birds. You know, and it just and the, the, it just goes on and on. God went down to the smallest detail to make sure mm -hmm. that every need was met. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, sometimes you know. I, I just, I'll be doing my Bible study and I'll read something and then I'll sit there and ponder on it for a moment and say, God, you are so awesome. Because mm -hmm. that's the type of thing that my eye, you know, in the military, they teach you attention to detail, you know. And okay. I was accused of being able to spot a cigarette butt and a snowbank at 20 paces you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you missed you that one type thing, you know? <laughs> but, but that's how i was trained it is the the it, because if you, if the details are taken care of the big picture is taken care of you know and uh, and sometimes when i'm doing a bible study on a particular subject or something and i'll see some small detail like that mm -hmm. and just like on the story of you know the uh when Jesus healed the blind man, you know, it says he was calling out, people were trying to tell the guy, shut up, shut up, you know, and, and Jesus called him and it says, and he tossed off his jacket and, you know, his cloak and, and went to Jesus, right? Just to buy, just passing word, you know, he tossed off his garment and went to Jesus. But if you do the research, that garment was given to him, like, as a symbol that the authorities have said, yes, he is really a blind beggar. You need to give him money. It's okay to do that. You know, and he tossed us, I don't need this anymore. So he was already demonstrating faith when he mm. went to Jesus, you know, and just mm. little, see, that, that, when I see little details like that, that, that jump off the page at me, that's when I said, wow, you know, that's in there for a reason. That's just not a passing comment. It was mm -hmm. in there for a reason. And that's mm -hmm. how God is, you know, and, and even when we're talking about heart healing, a small, just a, a, what we would call an insignificant gesture or a word in due season to mm -hmm. us is like, you know, God really has you with this you know, type of thing. That may be the one word someone needed to hear right there, you know, and, you know, they, they've been patted on the back and, you know, let me pray for you and all that, mm -hmm. but just some the, to you, it's like, well, you know, God has this. I know he has this. And the, type of mm -hmm. and the way you say it, the, the tone of voice, the caring, and all of a sudden it resonates. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. he's got me, you know. And, and that, yes, that, that, that's when, as you were talking about that, you know, the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Yeah. Get in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and you know, paying attention to the details is what I did in the next step that I was going to explain to people actually because okay. what I learned a long time ago was this important pivotal thing that happens in our walk 
when we remember to thank God. And it isn't after he does what we ask him to do, but before he does it. When we're in the middle of a crisis and strife, this is a key to being able to get through that crisis in a good way or to heal from it after the fact is to be able to say thank you. So here we've activated the trust, right, by demonstrating what happened with the Niagara Falls wheelbarrow, the difference between faith and trust, right? So now that we know we're to trust God and know that he'll do it for us, that helps us thank him. Ahead of time. So when we look in Philippians, this is my favorite set of scriptures uh, in the Bible, actually, maybe because I needed it so much, but Philippians chapter four, where he says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Mm -hmm. will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we go back and look at that. And again, this is in Philippians 4. We go back and look at that and break it down. What they're saying in these instructions is pray, ask God for the help we need, and then thank him in advance for the answers. And you know, how many times do Christians like me read that set of verses and go, just breeze past the thankfulness part? Yeah. And it's a very big key to being able to have peace through the situation because this is uncanny thing when you're in the midst of a crisis and you go, Lord, I'm going to choose to believe by faith. You can see me through this and I trust you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So so that enables us to thank him, right? Thank you, Lord, because somehow, some way you're going to carry me through this. You're going to bring about the peace I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, I learned about that a long time ago. And and what happens is when we go ahead and say thank you, and it doesn't make any sense to say thank you, (laughs) it's almost um, elevating emotionally anyway. You know, we kind of like pivot away from our um, stress because we're going, this is ridiculous. I'm saying thank you right now, but we're doing it because we recognize who God is. And in Psalms, we he has a verse that says, he who sacrifices thank offerings honors me and prepares a way that I may show him the salvation of God. And so when you think of sacrificial thanks, it's like, that's not, a, oh, thank you. After you get blessed, sacrificial thanks is more of a, whoa, I, I'm just going to say thank you no matter what, God. Mm-hmm. And he says it honors him and it makes a way for him to bless us. Amen. Amen. That is good. That's good. Praise God. I know there's people listening to us right now that may be in very similar situations. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know there's someone listening to us right now that needs heart healing as it relates to this, you know, the peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Can you pray with them right now and help them to bring heart healing to them, just like you have for others that we've talked about in prior episodes? It's a privilege. Yes, I'll be glad to. Well, those of you who are listening right now, I pray that you join us in prayer as we turn to the Lord, the God of all creation. And we ask him, Lord God, we pray that whoever's listening right now, whoever's feeling stress, despair, anxiety, depression over what has happened in the past or even is happening in the present. Amen. We ask, Lord God, that you come into their hearts, that you bring that peace that only you can bring, that you calm their souls and help them know that you are God and that you will see them through this and you will bring healing. We ask for a personal miracle for every listener, Lord We give this to you. We thank you for what you're about to do. We're so grateful that you care for us so much individually, that you love us each so very much without conditions. Praise your name, Lord. We thank you so much. We pray that this whole series, people will be able to recognize that you are amazing and you deal in the miraculous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And before we go, I want to share for you to share with us about your ministry, Vertical Hearts, and 
how this ministry is helping to spread the message of God's extraordinary love and ability to heal the broken places of people's hearts. Can you share a little bit with us? Yes, it's um, our goal in Vertical Hearts is to spread this message anywhere we can, every opportunity we have to help others understand how special this time is when we can turn to God personally, privately. We don't have to be in a big setting. We don't have to have some some special person pray with us um, almost every time. And I say almost because sometimes our grief is so heavy. You know, we feel like we need support <laughs> or our stress is so heavy. But God is with us individually and personally. And we get that message out to people, connecting our hearts, the hearts of people listening or reading the book to God's heart for them. And so people have said to me, this is an experience. This is amazing. So thank God for that. But her vertical hearts gets this out to everyone that we possibly can reach. And pastor, we're so blessed to be in, uh, have, we've had groups meet going through the book together in several States of the U S and in several countries of Latin America. We've just been in Cuba and uh, actually we just took some books into Mexico city. Amen. Amen. So we appreciate support for this ministry. Um, if people go to our website, theHeartHealer.org slash hello, they'll see the different things that we do. And in one image, they'll see vertical hearts. And if they click on that, they'll be able to go to the vertical hearts page. And uh, we just appreciate a gift of any amount that helps us make this happen around the world. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. And, and, you know, I appreciate that, you know, you shared all the information with us today about heart healing, you know, today and all the past episodes we did also. I appreciate you coming on and just blessing people with this information because it is so important this day and time in which we live. Amen. Thank you. And I, I forgot to mention the free gift. Yeah. Okay. When they go to the hearthealer.org slash hello, I know you'll put that in the notes. Um, they have a button they can click on to uh, claim a free gift. And that gift is a sample of the first chapter of the Heart Healer and the study guide that goes with it. That study guide's like a personal worksheet. So if they click on that, they can download that for free and have an opportunity to read what the book is about. Okay. And if someone wanted to purchase your book, The Heart Healer, how can they do that? It's on Amazon, right? It's on Amazon and many major websites, Barnes and Noble. And, um, oh, I've seen it in like Target, Walmart, all those places oh, too. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, whatever's happening currently, whoever's listening to this, um, Amen. Amazon is probably the most commonly used site. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Cindy, this has been so interesting. And if someone would like to reach out to you to ask a question, maybe order your book through the website, something like that, or possibly do an interview like this, how can they mm -hmm. do that one more time? How can someone get in touch with you? You know, they can go to that same website link and just click on contact, the tab that says contact. That's probably the easiest thing for people to remember. And um, when they send that contact information, I try personally to respond to every message that comes in. Amen. I'll put links, all this in the show notes below. Okay. Folks, as I shared in the beginning, people are hurting out there. It may be you. It may be someone close to you. It may be someone you work with. I can almost guarantee you know someone who's suffering a deep-rooted heartache that, that just needs to be touched by God and healed. Cindy's book, The Heart Healer, is a great first step. Drop down the show notes, click the links right there, get in touch with Cindy Bartelli, and order her book, The Heart Healer, right now amen don't wait get your hands on it today be sure to order your free gift as well that she talked about just click that link down below as also cindy thank you for coming back on the program today it's been a great series i can't hardly wait to have you come back on again and just catch up in the future and you got an open invitation anytime thank you so much and god bless you and what you're doing to serve the kingdom i appreciate that folks that is all the time we have for today for Cindy Bartelli and myself, it's Pastor Bob reminding you, be blessed in all that you do.